The word agriculture comes from agrarian, meaning the soil, and culture, the enrichment of soil. Yet today, modern industrialised agriculture is a system that destroys soils, extracts soils, minerals, and degrades soils and erodes soils. We have lost touch with the natural systems of the culture of soil. Topsoil is the layer that allows plants to grow and is decreasing at an alarming rate because of soil erosion. Most of the main crops of the world are eroding soils at 200 tonnes per acre per year. This cannot go on because topsoil is the basis of life on Earth. If we look at the present world as a species, we've lost touch with the natural systems. And industrialised agriculture goes against the laws of nature, and we are not separate from nature. To find a solution, we have to look at nature, and we have to build systems where humanity lives that is 70% forest cover, because it's in the forests that we truly learn and it's the forests that help us to manage our soil's stability and enable that soil to maintain its fertility. The word permaculture comes from permanence and agriculture, but it naturally leads to permanence in culture. It's a system that focuses on solutions rather than problems. It's the art of working with natural systems to create productive ecosystems that provide all the basic needs of humanity. A design science that begins with ethics and mimics natural systems in any landscape, in any climate, anywhere on Earth. Permaculture is the way we go beyond sustainability and into resilience. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to another episode of Boys in the Cave. My name is Tanzan, I'm joined by my two very special guests today. So we have Sheikh Hassan El Satuhi that we've had on before and also I'm very honoured to have um, Jeff Lawton um, in the cave today. And to intro, uh, introduce Sheikh Hassan, he's an engineer, permaculturist, business architect, Sheikh, community leader, strategist and technologist and has previously worked at the top in IBM before joining Muslim Made Australia in 2012 as CEO. And Jeff Lawton is a permaculture consultant, designer, teacher, speaker, and has specialised in permaculture education, design, implementation, system establishment, admin, and community development. So it's a big, uh, mashallah, um, resume. I think your LinkedIn profiles will be uh, very uh, populated, subhanAllah. So, Salam alaikum, Sheikh Hassan and Jeff Lawton. We'll start Jeff and welcome back and welcome to Boys in the Cave. Alaikum salam wa barakatuh. Thank you. I know you guys must be really tired. Um, you guys must be really busy with your life. And however, you know, I wanted to get to know because you guys work closely together um, in the field of permaculture. And I think it's also a unique field that the Muslim community haven't really grasped or, or, like to its totality. And it would be really good to just get an idea of like, um, you guys are both like managing directors of Permaculture Research Institute Australia, I assume. So it'd be good to just get an idea, like what was the purpose of starting it up and um, what did you look to achieve by starting it up? Well, it's actually now a, a gift recipient tax deductible charity called Holistic Sustainable Design. And uh, the Permaculture Research Institute fits into that as a not-for-profit, but the true gift gift recipient now is uh, Holistic Sustainable Design. And uh, we've worked together um, on permaculture work with Muslim Aid and co-direct, co-directors of Muslim Aid together. And um, we've, uh, we're both passionate 
about sustainable aid, um, which should make aid redundant, really. Um, in other words, it, uh, f- it fixes aid with sustainable results. So um, this is what we're, uh, we're focused on. In fact, we've just come back from a consultancy involved in an uh, Islamic school in Melbourne Mashallah. design. What does sustainable aid mean? Sustainable aid means that we can, we can um, provide aid that produces more energy than it consumes, enough in surplus to replace and replenish itself over the lifetime of the project so that it becomes more or less not required anymore. So you, you, you aid people to a level where they don't just come back to where they were, but they go on to something more and help other people do the same. So um, it, it's about designing with ethics, using provable science to provide all the needs of humanity in a way that was actually quite well spoken of in as a sunnah. Subhanallah. In, in what way? Like, could you just give an example of like how it kind of connects with the sunnah? Well, not wasting, yep. recycling, although the Prophet, peace be upon him, mainly recycled bread, but there wasn't plastic at the time. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, and, and, and not over-consuming in a way that, you know, you don't need too many possessions, but there's, there's many things you do need, um, which are, are more about having the right approach to life, having the right religion, as in the right religious practices, the right reverence, but also understanding that creation is the work of Allah, and it needs to be respected and not abused. And when we work within it, many things are then revealed to us. And and with that, uh, with that comes lots and lots of clarity and 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 um, under- extra understanding. So it, it, it's not just it's not just the physical world that we're we're dealing with here. It's it's literally the creation of Allah that we're 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 integrating with as as designers. Many things then align. And um, if more of us get involved, then we we all end up in a better place, and that better place is definitely sustainable. It's not something that's 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 degrading or, or degenerating or being destroyed. There's none of that there. They're, they're, everything is is extra abundance. I mean, it, you could say that we're designing with baraka. I mean, yeah. the baraka is that it's the extension of the of the living systems. It's that it's that extension of life. Understanding the 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 not understanding actually facilitating the creative event that is already there. But you know, there's much of it we don't understand. We have to align, and this is a wonderful thing for the young people. This is an exciting new thing that people need to switch to. I think it's the young people are really going to jump, and they're really going to make a move. Mashallah. And Sheikh Hassan, like, um, I was in the car, we were having a chat, and we were discussing, uh, you you mentioned the idea of how the capitalist system is in place, and we're just taking, 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 and not giving back. Um, what's your thoughts about, like, the system in place, and what you are looking to do? Yeah, frankly speaking, first, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Yeah, frankly speaking, I think the economic system is based on some flawed... Uh, assumptions which is like the resources are infinite and they will always have uh, economic growth until when yeah, and this is you have to give back to the system and what what does economy mean when when people uh, cannot find beds in hospitals or oh. so the education system is not getting better and so what 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 what, what does it mean to us to have like two per, uh, yeah, economic growth mm. and we are in surplus and all these things and when we don't see it, and when you see climate change, uh, when you see the deforestation, the depletion, erosion of soils, um, cancer is growing, uh, diseases is getting uh, from bad to worse, all this thing, and what, what does a surplus economy means then? Um, so we have to really look at the system at a holistic, uh, holistic view, and that's why permaculture basically is, is just an ethical design science. And Ustaz Jeff, Ustaz Jamal, is uh, is ethical design scientist? Yeah, I I prefer to call him, uh, or that that's I feel that's the real title, more than permaculturist or per specialist or things like that. I think he is, frankly speaking and accurately speaking, ethical design scientist. 
So um, I'm his student in this in this field. I've been learning a lot. I've been shadowing him. I learned a lot in one to one. We fly to we flew together to Africa to uh, Middle East to Asia everywhere. Yeah, and I'm just being next to him and learning this. The Zanu actually just come back from a consultancy to making uh, one of the important institutions, which is a school, uh, ethically sustainable. And as uh, you know, the basis of this uh, science, all the principles, as you just said as well, you know, they are in the Quran and the Sunnah. And I may elaborate further on what Ustaz Jamal has mentioned. You know, there are ba- principles in, in this uh, ethical design science. One is every energy that is needed by the system must come from the system. Not from no, no. And the system must produce those energies more than it, what it consumes to maintain itself and to replace itself. The output of one element is the input of another element. And that's the, the, you know what's the definition of pollution? When the output of an element is not used anywhere. And it becomes an abundance and just use like what becomes a problem. So how you design a cyclic energy system where the output of an element is an input or another element in an efficient, efficient way. Uh, and all these principles, diversity is, is the main main principle. You see in that the monoculture fields like maize and wheat and this is this is not right, you know. Uh, diversity and uh, for, I'll give an example in Surah Al-An'am Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa huwa ladhi ansha'a jannatin ma'arushatin wa ghayra ma'arushatin Allah it is Allah who created all this diversity of gardens that are trellis and non-trellis it has got the olives the pomegranate the palms the crop cover uh, the crop cover and the ayah finishes wa atu haqqahu ya mahasadihi and give back the surplus and give back the surplus is one of the principles of uh, of permaculture. And I'm just finish with this comment I read in the book of Introduction to Permaculture by Bill Mollison, who is the sheikh of my sheikh in permaculture. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill, Bill quotes uh, Fukuoka-san, a Japanese scientist, when he said like the he said like the likeness of, of the people who who adopt this ethical design sciences are the ones who don't. I like the, diff- the difference between like two babies, a baby who cut the breast of his mother to take all his all the milk, versus a baby who takes what he needs with reverence. So when we, when we, what we do to the industrialization of agriculture and the way of producing food and and I think let's talk about that halal food and what is the tayyib versus halal. It's not only halal. We'll talk, inshallah, we can talk about it as well. Uh, the baby who cuts just the breast of his mother. This is the current economic system. I think we're just cutting the breast of the mother to get all the milk now. But then, is it sustainable? Will the baby survive? Will the mom survive? Everyone will not survive. Subhanallah. Like it, to just tie in, because you know, I, I like talking about spirituality and the nafs. It's like how we're programmed to just take, take, and the nafs, and we're just looking to fulfill the nafs, and we do as uh, whatever we can to fulfill the nafs, and the systems in place kind of facilitate to fulfill the nafs and unfortunately we don't think about things a bit deeper and so it's amazing what you guys are doing specifically because it's making me um, more aware about these issues like um, you did the talk at um, UNSW and you mentioned like what was mind-blowing is um, someone asked um, how we can implement uh, this sort of um, thinking into masjids Mm. and you mentioned that um, with the water with the wudu that gets wasted essentially um, what uh, I think you've done in uh, different parts around the world is that you there was this certain specific plant where you wash the water through the reed beds, yeah, and it gets like essentially purified. And the more you want to put those plants in place, the more you'll purify that and water. That, so. That's an example of the cyclic energy. See the water that we make with well, that's the output is called grey water. It can become contamination, can become a pollution. It is a w- or a waste. And uh, but if you take that grey water, goes through a reed bed, and the roots of these reeds are, are like amazing. They just filter the water and purify the water with the water. So the output comes from the other other side, a water that can be used for banana circles, irrigation of plants. And then you now what happens? You converted your wudu water into fruits. Subhanallah. Into ed- edible fruits. And then you take the edible fruit and then you make an wudu again and so on. So it's a close, close cycle of energy. Subhanallah. Like even 
I feel that even in masjids, like, we just want to get the water. We need to pay for the water to use for the wudu. And the, our thinking just stops there after we get that water and that's it. Like, we don't care about where the water goes, subhanAllah. So yeah. That's just, like, one little example of the mm. many things that you yeah. both are looking to tackle, um, subhanAllah. So, I wanted to... I know we talked um, in our last episode, um, we, we did with Sheikh Hassan about, you know, permaculture especially. And a lot of um, our listeners can listen to that to get more of an idea as well. But... Um, I've actually asked our listeners certain questions that they want asked to you guys. And these questions are a bit, not I wouldn't say controversial, but they um, are unanswered are unanswered by maybe um, certain aspects of the community that deal with these issues. So it'd be really good to get your perspective about these questions. So my f- the first one I do want to ask is, this is a very specific question. Would you deem supermarket milk to be halal or tayyib? <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> you can get quite good supermarket milk now at some supermarkets so there is some milk that's not too bad it's getting better you can buy unhomogenized milk um in other words it hasn't been heat treated so it's 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 pasteurized the the cream separates but um this is a deeper question in that what really is milk in the eyes of Allah, what is milk? Allah. This is too deep, no? No, no, Small. no, it's not, because milk is quite a simple thing. It comes yeah. out of a, an animal that's had a baby. We're talking about cow's milk, sheep's milk, goat's milk, basically camel milk, right? It doesn't happen unless the, the animal's given birth, and it's lactating. In the first 72 hours, it's colostomin, which is where the antibodies are given to the baby, and it closes its gut, right? Otherwise, it's got a leaky gut, which is a problem people have with bad food processed food, too much sugar, all these unnatural foods that are definitely really not halal in the true sense because they're not good for our body. Are we not, we're not supposed to do things, we're not supposed to indulge in things that are not good for our body. Well, smoking, for instance, or of, of course alcohol is haram, but there are many things that are, that are not said to be that good, but a lot of foods are, are quite toxic. So if you actually look at milk, what milk really is, this is the milk the Prophet, peace be on, be sure. upon him, would have drunk Right, so let's talk sunnah milk, eh? <laughs> yeah, it was alive, it was living milk. If you sit it outside in the sun, it processes into a yogurt that the Bedouin people would drink, and it's healthier. It's healthy. It's got extra organisms which it's are beneficial. Yeah, organisms. If you take that pasteurized milk outside and put it in the sun, you'll probably die if you eat it. Dr- try drinking it in a few days later because it hasn't got the living organisms. More and more we realize that even our gut has an ecosystem of organisms that you have to honor. Who created all this? Where does this creation come from? Not from us. We have created nothing, nothing. We've reassembled things in crazy order. And we have to be responsible for these things because creation is not in our hands. It never has been. It never will be. That's because something completely different. So like when you're talking about honoring, when you're talking about honoring, Right, And then you define, why have we done that? Is it just for convenience or is that what we're told? Or is it for greed and profit? We're talking about an economic system that craves for 3% growth. I'd just like the, the listeners need to know this because this is you can look this up. If you get 3% growth, your consumption doubles every 40 years. That's twice as much food, twice as much energy, twice as much transport in 40 years' time. The, you now, you you, sir, might be alive in that time, <laughs> 40 years' time. Yeah. You, know, you know, the young people have to look at that, that doubling. Now, Sheikh and I work together, and it's a two-way street, so definitely he's my Sheikh. There's no question about that. And, and to be healthy, you have to have the right attitude. You have to have the right, do the right physical things, and you have to have the right spirituality. Um. So I'm, I'm, I'm teaching the design attitude with Sheikh. Right, <laughs> and uh, and I'm trying to help him there but as much as I can. He, he's got it pretty good anyway. But that uh, Sheikh's teaching me the spirituality. So the messages between us go two ways, and and they manifest in the physical, and hopefully it's all right. So there's funny lessons. Today I learned a lesson. We always learn a lesson for each other, which is wonderful. Today I learned a lesson that the Prophet peace be upon him yes. named everything he owned, even his sandals. Yeah. And therefore, he couldn't own too much because he had to name everything. So he, had, he was a little bit of a minimal, minimalist. So he, he couldn't be an over-consumer. Imagine if you had to Absolutely. name every, every article of clothes you have. 
You might have to redu- reduce your wardrobe. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Names. You have to Some go for the other names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can name everything you own. He, he named all his animals. He named you know, Some like, what a what a wonderful intimate relationship mm. that that he had with 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 his whole life existence. With yeah, I mean. It's that's that's not deep. That's just naming things. Yeah, that's intimacy. You know, like we need an intimacy with the creation, so that we can we can we can repair it. We can repair it while we're within it, because this is just the dunya. Yeah, mm. we're only within it for this opportunity, and I think this is the opportunity to do the right thing. Is it not? I wanted to ask you a quick question about like pasteurized milk specific. A lot of people say it needs to be pasteurized to keep the milk, I guess, uh, clean. But then we know like Rasul it's not like they went through a pasteurizing um, phase. So what you're inferring is that the more I like you get it straight from the the cow, and if you've um, kept uh, the cow in um, good condition and given it the right food, it'll um, give you good milk, um, taking care of it. But it's not really going through like a, I guess, I don't know what to call, like a filtering, like a pasteurizing um, process. So is it still better if you just get it like from the cow, like I don't know, raw? I'd, I'd call it's it. not heat treated. Pasteurizer is a heat treatment that kills the organisms in the milk. And then you have to, you have to seal it and, and refrigerate it. So it takes extra energy to keep it. So what you have to do is you have to have trust in the, per- you have to have trust in the person who, 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 who produces the milk for you we have to trust each other it's not high tech mm. it's not high tech right it's about doing things properly it's about having good tradesmen when it comes to cows and milk it's like a trade it's a skill yeah. it, it's an honored skill in the islamic world it's an honored skill all of those all, all of our food processing is is actually honored and we, all of these practices, we have to get back to something respectable and not something where we don't know what, we don't know where the milk comes from. We don't know how old it is. And we also don't even look into, is it good for you? And you ask me, is it halal? It, that's an opinion, I suppose. I don't think so. I prefer not to drink it. I have to teach all over the uh, world yeah. and help and people, says, so I uh, compromise. Can I ask but yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> that, would you classify that milk that is pasteurized and homogenized? And is it live milk or dead milk? Are we are we drinking dead milk? Dead or? milk. No question. Imagine if you are drinking dead milk. What 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 happens to you to your health and your gut? And and by the way, our guts is actually the soil. The soil of the human being is in his guts. Like soil is where all life come, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, minha khalaqnaakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. Allah says, like, we have created you from the soil. And to the soil, you will, 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 you, will you die and go back in burial. Yeah. And then Allah will resurrect us from the soil. So the soil, Allah created us from the soil. That's why soil is at the heart of this ethical design our permaculture, we really look after the soil because it gets the real plants, uh, real vegetation, and from the residue that we consume either directly or indirectly through the animals, to, through the meat and milk and, uh, and the other products. Uh, who, uh, will, If they consume this ethical uh, plantation, then we'll get a good byproduct as well, a healthy byproduct. And our guts is the soil. Is our soil. Look after your gut with the right pro. And when you have antibiotics, you're just killing your all your uh, your gut life, mm. and then your health is just destroyed. So, um, but if you look after your guts with the right probiotics and the right you know uh, right food, your your base is strong, your soil is strong, and then your health. You can then take your health to the next level. So now, if I'm drinking dead milk. What it causes to my if I drink if I eat foods that has been sprayed with herbicides and glyphosides and all these chemicals, and then I take that, and then if I feed my cattle and my herds with this sort of vegetation, then they produce milk. What sort of milk is this? And then I take that milk and I kill it by pasteurization and and homogenization, and then we consume the so it's a dead chemicalized. It is not, so now is it halal? 
يعني if you talk فقه ان شاء الله if you talk if you talk فقه يعني I can't really say it is حرام يعني with my hand or my heart say it's حرام thing because I don't have a Quran and hadith or a qiyas but with قياس and this is what استاذ done with his فطرة he's just like قياس analogy wise Are we allowed? Didn't is there an ayah Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "ولا تلقوا بأيديكم إلى التهلكة"? Do not harm yourself. وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا ضرر ولا ضرار. Don't cause harm to yourself and don't cause harm to others. Stop. So here a nahi. This is saying don't do, which means haram. Now, if you classify now this type of spraying the grains with glyphosates and all this uh, glyphosate just human and ustaz can elaborate in this it's a growth hormone that is uh, estrogen analogous uh, sub uh, composition uh, does it harm or not definitely harms so yeah. now we are harming ourselves by consuming this type of, of milk and, and and food so, so as you hear this you have an obligation to go and look into it No. Check out that we're perfectly correct. This is no. this is the information age where you have the chance to access, and you can access this yeah. information. And, and, and to me, it's part try. of the religion. You know, Ustaz said like it's a two-way street to learn from each other. In fact, I see uh, what I do is at the heart of what Ustaz Jamal is a, is a master of, and what he does is actually I see it as the heart of what I do. So, uh, the, and we have a saying: "Al-Hakika Qalbu Sharia, and Sharia Qalbu Al-Hakika." The Sharia is the heart of the Hakika, and the Hakika is the heart of the Sharia. So, at the heart of what he does, when we first met together, I found I I saw clearly, I what I have in terms of Deen, the Quran, and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the purpose of this religion. The purpose of the tradition of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sits at the heart of the science that Sajif is a master of, and what he says, I I saw it as also at the heart of what what we do of this deen. Subhanallah. And so, what's the option? Like, what do we do as people living in, like, just in a practical sense, Muslims living in the West? Like me, I'm just going about life, and I don't know where else to get milk. You just go Coles or Woolies or wherever. And buy milk, and you're telling me all this information. Buy, How can I make buy, a difference? Buy, and change. Buy raw milk. Buy unhomogenized. Yeah, within pasteurized. with the best intention. It's all about intention. Yeah. Mm. All, yeah. All, all of our all of our dean is about best intention. So you go to where you think you might be able to get the best, and and you go for the best, and you and you you support the people who are trying to do their best. So you will find that there are. Unhomogenized milks. You will even find some milks that are there as beauty treatments that are that are raw milks, and they say not to be drunk. They're bath milks, but they're yeah. raw milks. Ah, oh, okay. So there is definitely options then. Yeah, there, there are them. there are some them. options, yeah. and the more we buy them, the more they'll be provided. Like everything, yeah. the more you the the more we ask for them, the more they will be provided. It's always the way. Yeah, it's simple economics: demand, supply. Yeah. You know, if there's demand, there has yeah. to be supply. So plus, plus uh, spread spread the word. Plus, support the people who do the right thing. Me and ourselves also, and in Muslim in Australia, we and holistic sustainable development, we do we do support the farmers. To move yeah. them from the, يعني deep hardship that they live in now, we have just read in a magazine, Ustaz Ustaz Jamal just showed it to me. Eight farmers killed end their lives every day. Yeah. Farmers cannot feed themselves. Can, can you believe that? So we have we have they have been يعني that's another story how they've been dragged into this situation, but our 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 responsibility to support doing the right thing. Teach this science, uh, t- uh, raise the awareness, um, and and then it, inshallah, it will get from uh, from strength to strength. Inshallah. Subhanallah, inshallah. And so I, that was like the first kind of question. Um, it was mashallah very well explained, um, and it's opened my eyes as well. And the second one is also um, just as difficult. So. <laughs> I think the answer is pretty obvious, but I'll ask it anyway. I just want to get your thoughts and Haram. elaborate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the question. <laughs> yeah, no. how, how halal is um, the halal meat industry? How <laughs> halal is the halal meat? Um, I think, inshallah, pretty halal. Uh, it's getting better and better. And 
again look at which organization is doing the certification because some they don't really do any auditing or any overseeing of, of the process uh, it is just for them it's just a business it's just a certificate that they sell in, and, and, and I know that and I'm, I'm in touch and it's like people ask me from abattoir they are not Muslims like Sheikh we want to do the right thing this particular organization just send us a PDF file and an email every year just to take the fees Wow. and give the fees and they have no they don't, I, and I want to do the right thing yeah and and this is non-Muslim lady who st- works in this abattoir who is telling me this while other organi- other organizations mashallah they are doing the right thing they do the right other thing um, um, so in this case from that sense the, the halal market is halal but from the ba- the haqiqa sense from the inner damage from that reality perspective now is this meat is type or not this is the meat that we eat here is type or not is it which is it aslan is it harmful meat or not it costs so much harm while the meat i eat from our farm in zaytuna it is different from every level at every from every angle you feel that this meat is medicine well while the other meat you eat it and you just you feel that you are your health is just يعني uh, impacts your health in a very negative way Oh so, Jeff, so it depends yeah. on which is, which meat you're talking about. Like, it's the same question as milk. Which milk? There's some terrible like hormones milk? in meat. Yeah. I mean, there's and and some t- terrible chemicals that are put on animals, especially the large animals, where uh, you know to stop uh, flies and ticks and things that it bonds in the fat. But to answer your question about just the kill, um, I've 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 butchered on the farm cows and sheep and goats and ducks and chickens and hundreds of times of, of, of poultry and still do um, because of certain regulations my students I have to take uh, my animals to abattoir uh, my uh, large animals just just the cattle other, other regulations aren't so strong and uh, I've been because of that they're my animals I've, I've delivered them and I've gone into the slaughter room and I've been satisfied that, that, that the kill itself is halal and 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 good and well done um now um they are my animals and i guarantee they're a hundred percent um I'm, when they go through this is a casino abattoir in northern new south wales and i know that the uh, the halal inspectors come at least every month from sydney and check everything out um it goes then to a butcher locally who who then will 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 clean all his tables and cut the meat with all bleached knives and clean knives. So we're pretty sure we're by the time it comes through, it's you know it, it it's it's still halal the way it's even cut. Yeah, so I I I myself, like you're asking us about the milk, I myself can't send an animal to an abattoir without knowing that the camp, right through to when it arrives back to me is cut meat, having gone through the butcher, that every process is okay because it's easy enough to do. I mean, why should I? I I'm more respect for the animal than that. <laughs> And and the meat we need to eat, but when you're actually talking about the quality of meat, um, yeah, you've got a lot of dangerous chemicals bonded in fat. So very, ca- you have to be very careful about that. Hormones, particularly with the poultry factory animals, those hormones are uh, are very scary. Um, I actually have like I learned in uh, when I was studying a bit of philosophy. I was tied this into what you're mentioning because you mentioned that you want to be in tune with each process that's going on and what's happening. So you're in touch with. Um, each process before you know they are essentially made into meat, right? Um, what I what I actually found in uh, philosophy and the cl- capitalist system that we live in is that because you know multinational companies and they build factories and they have each section for a uh, different uh, thing to make each product. Like for example, I don't know um, to build an iPhone, you need uh, the cover, and there's a certain section that takes care of making the cover and then another section takes care of the internal products or all this sort of stuff and one of the criticisms of like um i uh, it is sort of marxist but it's very uh, interesting take is that in this process every person is actually alienated from the final product like people aren't actually in tune with what's actually happening they're just a cog in the wheel essentially and that and what they were trying to draw in comparison was like in the previous days um when they were making things um by hand it could be any like it could be like a utensil for example 
they actually have like a connection with that because they are able to see the final product and they can call it their own if that makes sense and this is exactly like ties in from what i can see and what you're explaining about even the food process that um what you're trying to do is you're in tune with each product like for me right like I just have to go to the shops and buy meat. I don't have any connection with the animal or what's actually happening. So I've seen like um we've done an episode with um Ahmed Karat um from Maidan Archery Club. Yeah. He he mentioned like he's a hunter as well. Yesterday. Subhanallah. <laughs> Mashallah, amazing brother yeah. as well. And he's doing amazing yeah. works and he also mentioned he was hunting. Um he has a more personal relationship with that meat like because he'll take care of that meat when he does hunt it and make it and eat it as well. Hmm. So it's like the same thing. It's about reconnecting with, I guess, the product, and in in your context is like the meat and the animal as well. And hmm. it's not actually happening from the system that we actually live in. It's like a disconnect as well. We would we would slaughter a cow on the farm, and within two and a half hours to three hours, it would all be bagged, cut, bagged, named, and and going into the freezer. And that's a very personal relationship with an animal that I probably help, was there the day it was born. Well, wow. um, but you know, it, it's what you're actually talking about there with the dissection process of everybody making a different component. Our life is about meaning, mm. right? With we, it's it's about finding meaning, right? So all of us are craving a meaningful life, and 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 what you're actually touching on is craftsmen. Exactly, yeah. Craftsmen of necessity. Yeah. And what we're aiming, what we're going towards is robots of necessity yeah, with AI. Exactly. What, where, where's the meaning? Where's the meaning gone? <laughs> the, yeah. Nobody's looking for the meaning, but the, we've lost the target, you know, and the message is, is with us. Islamically, the message is absolutely mm. clear. There's no question about this. I'm, I, don't, I can't, I really want people to just clear the fog a little bit and have a look at this because it's quite, it's not hard to step out of this veil of deception and find a meaningful life. But you, you do need, now you actually need a system to climb back into that meaningful life. You need a design yeah. system. And, and it does start with ethics, which are all central within, with, within Islam. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, to, to, for, for the majority of us to end up with craft, craftsmanship quality it takes 10,000 hours to master something really well you might only master one or two things in your life fully so you could have five careers running concurrently you're, you're the master of one you're you're very good at another thing right so you're master of one thing you're part-time at another profession you're occasionally three other part-time professions so you've got three different life skills that that make your life meaningful that inter integrates with community what a wonderful thing instead people are sticking together little bits of iphone in a factory somewhere that's one component and they don't don't know the whole component yeah. structure it's like that's that's not a life that's so, that's 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 a total dissection of reality um that's unfortunately that's like the re reality that we're actually living in now it doesn't have to be there's nobody walling you into this actually you just need to trust each other we need to trust each other and have some courage not much yeah. because yeah. it's where it's actually written for us this is written the clarity is written it's very clear very very clear so even um check um you can elaborate a lot um, about this because you you touch um, Ustad that uh, about ethics and even in Islamic uh, tradition when we do learning, we are always uh, I know like scholars are trained in a way where they're doing they're learning akhlaq manners ethics even before they're you know touching big books on fiqh and aqidah and all that. So, so not even, especially you don't need to use the terminology even in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's especially, especially especially yeah, yeah. it is you know it's not yeah. even don't be surprised yeah please listeners don't be surprised it's been there in front of us all this time yeah. <laughs> Subhanallah. and um what about your thoughts Sheikh, about like um how, how do we go about then because you mentioned the meat industry is improving um so it's about essentially checking with the halal certification and trust getting a trusted uh, butcher for example because um i know like even me i i've experienced certain people that have done like 
dodgy stuff and you mentioned yourself even it's just about certificate and getting the money so w- what step st- what step as a community in a practical step should we how can we take okay. a practical step yeah very good question so it's, it's multi-dimensional or multi-level thing uh, one aspect of it is the process the process of processing the animal itself right uh, and that the fiqh of it is well known but then there is another thing that is the meat can be halal slaughtered and everything but then they put all these uh, chemicals that make it looks red and fresh and yeah. this and that so that's that's another thing yeah that's another harm which in also my opinion is is haram for sure it's haram to do this that's cheating mm. right that's, that's cheating that's for sure so it's haram so now can i consume such a thing uh, there is now a third level which is the history of that meat how this animal was raised there's another dimension how the animal was processed you know there is is it in all rahma mercy kindness or it has become like an industrialized process where people just really lost like you see when we Allah sallallahu alayhi wa says inna allaha kataba al-ihsana ala kulli shay fa'idha dhabahtum fa'ahsinu al-dhibha Allah has made put excellence and mercy and beauty in everything hmm. even when you slaughter an animal slaughter it with mercy and and beauty even there is beauty and uh, and mercy in slaughtering an animal this is plus the actual slaughter there's not a dead animal it was not like took a, a bullet in its head or something like that it's just properly slaughtered you cut the two uh, artery and the trachea and the blood drains and and so on but also how how it was done that's another thing which makes it also uh, non-halal if it is not done properly it becomes the, the doesn't become haram it becomes haram Th- uh, also I think like the meat itself is it being now how it is uh, do they add chemicals to it just to uh, are they cheating in, in, in selling it or not that's the third thing fourth thing is the history of of the animal so now we are raising awareness you know, you're touching in really <laughs> important and critical mm. points uh, and I'm giving you equally uh, critical answers, I think. So now we have it, everyone hears us, everyone knows. We have to spread the rules, we have to raise the uh, spread the word, we have to raise the awareness, and everyone has to do the right thing. And then go and support and buy from the from the right the right places and support the people who are doing it right, who are doing it right. And uh, as I said, don't forget also the the history of the how this animal was fed. So don't. Imagine animals who are locked up in what they call these feedlocks, factory farms and feedlocks, and you just uh, they, they feed them grains that has been sprayed by all these herbicides and, and glyphosides and all this stuff, uh, GMO food, يعني, versus an animal that was free range, grass fed, organic pastures, and and it is your health, يعني, my dear brothers and sisters who are watching us and listening to us. This is your health. What else? What is more important to you than your health? If you and by the way, you know, I, I'm teaching Ahya Ulum al Now we are going through book Ahya Ulum al on Fridays. What is the first chapter in Ahya Ulum al in the quarter of the day to day habits? Imam al Ghazali started with the book of food. The first mm. thing. Why? And he says, why? He justified. Why I started with the book of food? You know, the th- chapter three is the halal and haram. Riba and earning from riba and making haram business and cheating and all this. But you know, he didn't start with this. He started with food. So to me, it was like, I was mind blowing. Why Imam Ghazali starts with the book of food? And then he says, he answered, he expected that people will, will, will ask that. He said, the الغاية, he said exactly like this غاية كل لبيب أن يصل إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى The purpose of every smart person is to please Allah سبحانه وتعالى and to enter Jannah. This is the purpose. And you cannot do this without two things. علما عمل Without getting the right knowledge and doing the right thing. So studying the deen uh, etc. and then praying and fasting and doing the sharia and doing business uh, farming, agriculture, what, uh, medicine, if you are a doctor, accounting, if you are an accountant, and so on and so forth. You have to learn how to do it right and then doing it right. right? And then he, you cannot take the ilm or the amal without being healthy. Do you think if someone is sick and will he go and seek knowledge? 
Will he go to the masjid and pray five times a day? Will he work in the go to fa- work in the farms? He can't. You know, if I'm, I'm his head, he's sick, and that's and he said that the house of sickness is the stomach. House of diseases, al ma'da to bait the kama qara sallam said. So you look after your gut. You look after what you eat. Then you get to become healthy. When you are healthy, you can seek the right knowledge and apply this right knowledge. And when you do when you seek the right knowledge and apply knowledge, this is you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See how the logical thinking behind it and the process, and that's why he says started with the book of Allah. Just to add, Sheikh, I know you can elaborate um, this, uh, elaborate on this a lot more than I can, and uh, just the idea of having, you know, you had, we talked about dead milk, we talked about meat that doesn't have, it shouldn't be, we shouldn't be eating essentially, um, it doesn't have those nutrients. Even ha- taking that on board and eating it, it's like though that meat was alive, that cow was alive. If it is depressed and it's put in a depressed place you and you're making it into a meat the meat is essentially dead and depressed you're eating it it's in your being now like it's you're extracting yeah. the the nutrients from that dead it, it's part because it, we know the the body isn't just the body it's just, there's a ruh, the soul as well mm-hmm. these, these are inner dimensions it's like we're taking on board just this dead this dead sad unhappy me and it's part of our being now which is actually really mm-hmm. scary like it yeah. might it will affect us on very psychological levels and that we yeah, probably how can't the rate, realize. Of, the rate of commit suicide this is serious issues that we the akhlaq the manners the domestic violence even all the issues that the secular community faces challenges that these communities who, who pretty much denied something called spirituality don't talk to me about religion. Don't talk to me about worship. So this is mm. science does not prove this or doesn't exist. This cruelty, cruelty to animal. So you 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 you've you've decided to ignore the cruelty of an animal, right? In the way it's produced for your 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 supply line, chemical, non-chemical, whatever. I mean, we've got RSPC friendly. Chickens now advertise, you know, <laughs> Woolworths advertise, RSPC friendly. Lots of people doing organic and all this sort of thing, yeah. Just just from Sunnah, right? Is there anywhere that you saw any hadith, any reference to the Prophet, peace be upon him, being cruel to an animal? Or accepting somebody else being cruel to an animal? There's lots of expressions of kindness, lots. That's the only thing I can see. I mean, would in 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 at this point in time, or in 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 the in the history, someone comes to Me- Medina or Mecca and says, "I've got this idea. We're going to pen all these chickens up, <laughs> all the cows, and we're going to put them in these cages, and we'll be cruel to them. We'll feed them. They'll grow fat, and they'll be, and we'll get more meat, and we'll make more money. What you, you, you're going to get support from 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 really truly religious people, right?" Who believe that? So you're eating that, and and we know this is the information age. We're talking to you from computer here. This is the internet. I mean, you could, there, you haven't got a very large excuse here for this, really. I mean, ha, where are you? You you you, uh, you are in a cave if you don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're coming from a cave, yeah, right? Not, not our not our cave. Our <laughs> cave's very intellectual, inshallah. But our any other is, cave, our yeah. cave is the <laughs> cave of <laughs> reflection and, <laughs> and contemplation, inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine yeah. you deny the spirituality, and then you're eating dead 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 things. Which affects directly affects spirituality. Use what you eat. It's pretty scary, Subhanallah. I know because um, you guys had a busy uh, weekend. I don't want to keep you too long, Inshallah. I think we talked um, in, in this amount of time. We still talked a lot of deep stuff, Inshallah. Before I, I'll let you go. I do want to ask one question to each of you, and this is usually the hardest question we pose to our guests. We ask all our guests on Boys in the Cave. So, um, and I'd run uh, what I'd want a response from both of you, inshallah. So, um, if you had uh, a chance to hang out with three people in a cave, um, someone maybe perhaps you looked up to in life, or someone that you've um, really 
um, you've read works of in the past and were influenced by certain people in history, upset excluding Rasul Sasam and the Sahaba because that's really easy. Everyone's just gonna pick them. We'll say for other sake they're already in the cave. They're waiting for you, and um, you just need to pick three other people in history or even in the present times to um, chill within a cave and really perhaps pick their brains. Who would you pick? So I'll start with Sheikh Hassan first, and Oops, then. Uh, uh, and next. does the exclusion list includes also Imam Shafi, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, um, and all the Imams? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ideally, because we still want because a lot of people pick them as well. So, yeah, pro, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, excluding like you know the four imams and all that. Let's just say they're all there. Yeah, and then um, you'd have to pick three other people. So, inshallah, assuming Prophet Muhammad sallallahu so, so. alaihi wasallam and the Malaika Jibril alayhi salam, yeah. <laughs> and the Sahaba and uh, and our uh, chain of transmission of the scholars. It doesn't Shafir. have to be all scholars. If it's a scholar that we aren't mm. aware of, mm. um, you can definitely name them. But you know, the four imams, everyone knows them, so mm. it's a bit unfair to like <laughs> yeah, no. pick them. So I'll be Imam Nawawi. Okay, inshallah. Imam yeah, yeah, well. Nawawi for sure. Um, and Imam uh, Ibn Abi Jamr al Andalusi, Abi Abdullah Muhammad Ibn Abi Jamr al Andalusi, Sahib Bahjat al Nufus. I have some of his books here. So who is he and why is he influential? Um, see, if you ask me, what if, if there are only a few books, one book of hadith, a commentary on hadith, and one book of tafsir, that I will spend the rest of my life, just to get the rest of my life, that will be that book is called Bahjat al-Nufus. For Imam, uh, is a commentary on Sahih al-Bukhari. Um, so this this Imam is I can if you like I can grab just the book is just above you here. <laughs> I can show it to the audience. Um so this this definitely one Imam I would like to be with, Imam al Nawawi. And the third person is uh Mahmoud Afandi, my Sheikh. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yeah. Those are beautiful answers. Yeah. And start. also we, yeah. I'm already with Ustaz Jamal. <laughs> we, we need we need we need to do this work together. I it's cannot I cannot do this any of this work without you. <laughs> Subhanallah, yeah. mashallah. It's like like a combination. Like it's like uh, the. Um, can I choose my wife as well? <laughs> because if <laughs> she's listening, she will be, will be really upset. Inshallah, we'll, we'll, five people now. Don't worry, all good. Inshallah, be upset if I didn't say my wife. So. We'll, we'll do a leeway, inshallah, yeah, for yeah. whatever. But um, yeah, like yeah. you two, like working together, you have different skill sets and fusing it. It's like mashallah, it's amazing. Like it's like a deadly combination, kind of. It's not. It's a good combination. Like, yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. And I think, yani, those uh, eight years I've been working side by side with was Ustaz Jamal. I think they're worth 80 years, 84, yeah, and not, not 80 Allah. years. Yeah, and every day is, uh, today was, uh, was another one, yesterday was another one, and every day, yeah, and we nearly talk to each other every day. Wherever we are in the world, we travel together in every four to the four corners of the world, and sometimes we are in different places in the world, but we are always in touch, and, and I think, uh, and I said, look, you know what? And I said it again, I will not be an independent consultant of permaculture and doing, Ustaz has got magnificent, magnificent students already leaders in the whole world. But I don't want to be one of them, to be honest. I just want to be work <laughs> work work next to him. So like, <laughs> I will not be have my own consultants. I will just work with him. Yeah, and be by, he by his side until I die, inshallah, <laughs> in this endeavor. Yeah, inshallah. <laughs> I'll start. Um, yeah, so your turn, inshallah. Three, three people. You can't pick the same as Sheikh because uh, Sheikh's extremely modest. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm gonna have to segue my wife in there too, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll assume. Yeah, we'll bring the wives along. You just have to pick three other people, inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> wives and family are counted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my wife's a, a, a Palestinian Jordanian, so I'm, yeah. I'm gonna be in trouble if I get to, <laughs> get this wrong. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Bedouin descent, <laughs> yeah. uh, um, and Sheikh's gonna be there. So that's cool. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to say Bill Mollis is my teacher, um, and 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 that's gonna make it kind of fun uh, <laughs> with everybody else that's there. But yeah. that's gonna be, I'd like to see that. <laughs> but Sheikh has met me also. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, um, really. And I'd I'd probably have to say Fukuoka. I'd probably so, have to say Fukuoka from who wrote, wrote One Straw Revolution, because um, it's another sort of philosophical mind um, who is in in touch with things. And, Do you give and, a quick summary of like who he is, uh, so for the audience? Yeah, Fukuoka sure. is someone who wrote about stacking time into 
um, ecology through through crop production and and he, he's he's famous for 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 riding uh, how how to like it's very interesting we talk about uh, stacking diversity together and and all the connectivity of elements but but there's also the time element that you can put into um, an ecology or a, or, a, or a space right and you can do it with people as well you know so so it's it's, it's connectivity through through sort of time compression, if you like it, and it's difficult to just put it quickly. But so he wrote this famous book that that was the 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 his great work and many since. But Fukuoka is a Japanese farmer, scientist, uh, agricultural scientist who rejected the 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 standard system and took a very uh, small 40-acre farm and made it more fertile every single day that he lived there for his whole life. And, and he, he, he taught this wonderfully well to people and um, and sort of set uh, uh, a sort of um, uh, a, a phys- philos- philosophical but also practical approach to nature, really. He wrote another book called Road Back to Nature. Right? Uh, and um, so... The listeners would have to look that up, but it's sort of in my um, uh, t- twist of understandings. You know, it's 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 in there. Um, and then I was having trouble with the third one, um, <laughs> but then I I kind of thought about that, and I'm kind of um, I have to express things in a very design way. Mm. And an and, uh, artistic way to to uh, marry the science with the with the patterning of of, of nature. It, it's it's uh, um, it's my one of my skills I've had to develop, and I've I've been lucky to do. Um, so I think that in the cave, right, in, yeah. with everybody, I th- I think I'd like to have Rumi. Subhanallah. <laughs> that would be nice. Different dimension. Yeah, yeah just a to... different dimension. And it would be just just nice to have have that you know together like and and I'm sure it'd be just it would it would sort of be serious and chilled or exactly and, yeah. and funny and and, <laughs> and and I like humor I think humor's great it's, it's, well, it's wonderful so there'd be some humor there too it's like a uh, different dimension like you got Sheikh you know with the Islamic side of things and then you got yourself actually you you obviously know the Islamic side of things as well but also with um, on the ground stuff and then you got like that dimension of Rumi coming in with the poetry so that's like a different dimension adding it all together fusing all that knowledge subhanAllah so it'd definitely be a cracking cave and, in my and, opinion and Bill will be making us laugh for sure <laughs> and humor's humor's such such a healthy thing yeah it, it's you know we, we've chuckled in this interview and every time we have, it's made us feel, and the audience has felt it too, I'm sure. It made, it's made everyone feel not better, nicer. Like, yeah. it's nice. You know, so much ugliness are out there, and everything should be so nice and beautiful. There's so much beauty yes, out there to express and extend. Definitely. Inshallah, people can also take on their sentiments and improve their lives in general, even with the topics that we discussed today. Um, there's a lot to take out from this episode. Um, um, subhanAllah, I really enjoyed this episode. So, Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh Hassan, Ustad Thank Jeff, you. for coming on Boys in the Cave. Um, inshallah, we can do uh, more effort episodes in the future. That'd be amazing. Um, just um, pick your brains a bit more about certain subject areas. But I do want to share this because I know Sheikh Hassan is very known locally in, um, around the community. So, I, I see him from time to time. But I know Ustad Jeff lives in, I think, outwards towards... Uh, Queensland, I think, like Lisbon, yeah, Lisbon. I remember, like, I, I've always had like a few months back and back of my mind because I knew about Zaytuna Farm. Um, so I'm like, inshallah, maybe you know, if we we could do a road trip with the boys because two of my co-hosts are a bit um busy tonight. But then I always thought about making may, maybe making a journey out that way, see the farm, and do an interview with you. So alhamdulillah, I was able you're able to come to Sydney instead and do it with me. So I really appreciate your time. I'd still invite you there, inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah, Anytime. really appreciate it. So for our listeners, thank you for. Uh, joining us with this conversation if you have any questions or queries feel free to email us at info at boysinthecave.com or find us on Facebook and you can follow our journey through Instagram 
please leave a five star rating on iTunes as that greatly helps us. And if you want to support us on Patreon with donations, inshallah, you know, we can uh, slowly improve and do video episode. We have a video episode coming up as well. Uh, it probably will be published before we publish this um, pub- publish this episode. So inshallah, you can support us in uh, through that journey. So go to patreon.com slash boys in the cave. So from our special guest, Sheikh Hassan, Ustad Jeff, and um, myself, we wish you all the best. This is Tanjum signing off. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.